What's up guys? Welcome to Jason Projects. I'm Jeff and this is your SoCal Fishing Forecast for Thursday, October 19th. Quick look at our little 10 day weather forecast here. Uh, temperatures picked up a little bit today. We had uh, some Santa winds kicked off. It tried to push the fog off the beach, however, it was unsuccessful. So uh, things cool down here Saturday. And you see this cloud cover is returning, so you definitely have a chance of some more dense fog. Uh, very out of season for October, but, you know, it's the Nino. It's doing what the what the Nino wants, so it is what it is. But then, um, yeah, looks like we're going to start cooling off here towards the end of the month. And we'll be following into, uh, you know, the winter conditions as uh, as it goes. So. Quick look at our wind model here. Um, not not good news for you guys. Unfortunately, today, you know, Thursday looks great out there. And then, uh, you know, this October thing just didn't really pan out. Those uh, dreamy, glassy conditions, just um, very, very limited. And this wind is going to start firing up again for wintertime. And um, it's pretty, pretty relentless for the most part. So um, I definitely see a dip in the water temps coming here. Shorter days, 21 knot winds uh, for a long period of time here. Now we're talking like a one day, two day event here. Now we're going into Monday. And uh, just kind of see where things are going with this. Uh, not looking good. So uh, if you have the opportunity to get out the next day or two, uh, take it while you can. Uh, the fishing might still be decent come, uh, you know, November, December. Uh, but with winds like this, uh, your chances of getting out there on the outer banks, uh, not going to happen. So just cause the fish around doesn't mean you get the fish for them. And, uh, you know, we're looking at Wednesday here, uh, coming into Thursday of next week. So I know this chart's way out there, and who who knows? But um, uh, it's highly inaccurate this far out. But when you have a trend that's this long, uh, it's it's pretty easy to follow that you're going to have significant wind of some kind. Maybe for that not sustained the entire time, but it's pretty darn significant. So I hate to be a bad news, but um, yeah. Those water temps are on their way out for sure. Looking at a marine forecast here, uh, we do have a little bit of combo swell. Uh, this is typical for uh, October, but um, the reason why, also we got we got this little guy down here spinning up off Cabo. I'll give you the the clip notes version, but uh, rolls up as a hurricane and parks itself. It hits a wind shear. And then it tries to fizzle out and then kind of does and goes east. So who knows what's going to happen with that. It could be just a wave maker. Uh, there's a fishing tournament going on in Cobb right now. And this, they say they're going to run. So uh, at least it's far enough away right now where it's not, not making a meaningful impact. But um, we'll see how the rest of the tournament season goes. So keep an eye on that. But uh, locally, that wind is going to be kicking up this... Uh, Ooh, four foot wind wind waves, probably worse on the outside. Uh, you know, this is a thirty to sixty nautical miles out to San Clemente Island. So behind the island is going to be significantly worse. Uh, you know, six foot, eight foot. I wouldn't be surprised. So seven day chart. So uh, seventy one degree water in here, much cooler on the outside. Sixty six. Uh, expect most of this to evaporate. Uh, come down to 68, I'd say, would be, probably be my best case is the eight day. The three days is looking pretty similar, but you know, these fog, this fog and clouds is really not giving you a clear picture on the three day, but I would expect most of the same. So, uh, chlorophyll chart, nothing too exciting. It's all going to get greened up here with that wind. Uh, it's just, it's what happens. Winter is a coming. But um, let's work out the 8-day chart and uh, let's talk about some of the fishing that's going on. Uh, summarize uh, my two-day trip over the weekend. Um, 
So uh, I was very excited to go fish Tanner Cortez Bank for the bigger fish, and um, that's not where we went, fortunately. We did join the Armada at the 289. Uh, I showed you that nice sharp edge of chlorophyll that was there uh, earlier in the week, and the fishing was really good. Uh, pretty much lights out the day before and the day before that, and that's really the reason why that we headed there. Uh, and when we got there, there's 28 sport boats. So we've talked about it all the time. You got that many boats, the fish spread out, they piece out. And when you don't see them, they either go north or they go west. That's what happens. It's just what they do, uh, particularly into the wind, so to speak. Um, so uh, we got to the 289. Apparently they got a little bit of a bite there. It's two hours of four, we got there, and then shut down, sun came up, uh, no fish anywhere. Uh, we drove around all over the place, didn't see nothing. Uh, we drove south towards the 43, a little bit better sign of life, but no one was catching anything, and um, didn't really see any fish on the sonar. And then we headed east, and at this point I'm just like, uh, where it's uh, 11 o'clock, we don't have a fish on the boat, so uh, I'm going to drag lures until <laughs> until we find them. Uh, so we ended up heading east to the 182. Uh, I dragged, I mentioned earlier this season, I was going to focus on trying to pull some uh, bullet lures. I, I think they're going to be pretty effective for tuna. Uh, first fish I hooked was a tuna. Uh, unfortunately it didn't make it to the boat. It kind of got foul hooked. Um, I was showing big lures cause trying to catch bigger fish, you know, that's kind of my philosophy. Uh, but I was pulling a nine inch Sumoto, uh, bullet lure. And, uh, first one got foul hooked. Like I said, I saw it was skipping across the water, uh, as we were slowing the boat down cause I had the drag on pretty tight. And, um, yeah, like I said, that one came off, uh, about, Three miles later, pulled off a uh, small Dorado, maybe like five or six pounder is, is pretty small. Um, but like I said, Dorado are dumb and they, if they're hungry, that they'll eat anything. And, um, you know, that <laughs> a little Dorado ate a nine, a nine inch bullet lure. So, like I said, uh, they don't have to eat anything. So, uh, that one did make it to the boat and uh, we didn't see anything at the 182. Nothing else going on other than those two blind hookups on the troll. And then, uh, yeah, everyone kind of put their feet up because we're going west. <laughs> and uh, we came west past the 43. We were both a butterfly. We we're actually pretty close to this tent break that's here on the chart. It's a pretty fair assessment of our location. And... Um, Saw some dolphins finally, something that was going on. There wasn't really any service signal whatsoever. Um, saw some dolphins. There was definitely tuna on them. You can tell by the way they're swimming. They wanted nothing to do with the boat. Uh, jumping, slapping the tails. Um, so I got in front of them. And then as soon as we saw some fish in the sonar, just dumped a huge dipper and then flyline baits back as we slowed to a stop. And we did that twice. We got one, one year, uh, one bluefin each time. 20, 25 pound fish. And then um, after the second time, we kind of saw the dolphins off in the distance. And before we, we got to them, we metered another school of fish. And this is like right at sunset. Uh, threw a pretty good dipper. And then we went wide open bluefin sundowner. Um, at one point, we were fly lining baits at dark, and they're still biting them fairly decent, which is, I hadn't seen it, like, pitch dark fly line fishing ever. Um, so that just tells you how wild they were. Um, and then, like, a good 30 minute, 35 minutes after total darkness, um, I switched to the noodle rod. I told you I was going to fish the noodle rod this year, so I finally uh, thinned out the quiver to bring it, and... Um, Again, hoping to fish for bigger fish. <laughs> uh, only only 25 pounders in the whole school. Um, did catch one. 
uh, with the noodle rod. Uh, I think I got four, four fly line and then caught one on the noodle rod with the Daiwa SK 200 gram jig. Um, the small jig, small fish, just that's what you got to do. And um, yeah, noodle rod was fun. Uh, I want to pull on some bigger fish with that uh, Matto reel before I give it the blessing to say uh, it's worth buying. Uh, but the price point on it, like I said, was like 220 bucks versus a thousand dollars for a Rage 90 or a Monster Game PE8 reel. So I figured at the core of the price, you really can't go wrong. And um, like I said, the four uh, specifications are nearly identical. Uh, the drag plate is exact copy, so it's a form reel. They all share the same parts for the most part, but. Uh, one fish works fine. Uh, like I said, I really want to catch one over 100 on it just to give it the blessing before I make any recommendations on purchasing it. But again, uh, the price is right, so I went for it. Um, so yeah, basically wide open for hour and a half, two hours. Uh, we only had 12 guys on the trip. And we had like 36, 37 tuna, something like that. Um, by the end of that... Um, didn't really see any more night action. Um, a couple other boats from the fleet joined us, and uh, we just rocked and rolled through the night and slept. Uh, sunrise, um, yeah, we went up, poking around, looking for some more fish, and we finally got one school to kind of cooperate for us to catch up on our limit, two day limits, and uh, plunker style fishing. 20 pound test number four number six hooks got it done and um yeah just plunker long soaks uh annoying bluefin fishing as as they call it uh but yeah that's bluefin for you so uh we got our limit pieced out and uh yeah that was that was our, our two-day trip so um but let's talk about the rest of the fishing going on channel islands this is all gonna be blown out um, there was a six swordfish, uh, I saw it caught over the weekend, like a 450. That's pretty badass, if you ask me. Um, coming down south, again, Santa Barbara, San Nick, no one's fishing this stuff. It's too far, it's too windy, not, let's not burn the gas. Uh, Catalina, no words of any bites, per se, are on the island. I will tell you that the slides to the 152 on the way back, was like 10 miles of birds. So you know that the bait's there. And then there's a report today of uh, some marlin sleepers in, uh, in the same area. So uh, if you're looking for a marlin or you want to stay close to home, I would definitely investigate this area. I guess it looked really fishy for like, not not, not a joke, 10 miles uh, from one side to the other. Nothing but birds. Uh, you couldn't count to 10 without seeing another bird. Turns, seagulls, everything was there pelicans it was all there so i uh, definitely like the way that this water was looking on the way back and uh you know i'd spend some time poking around there if, if i was on a private boat for sure before uh, you burn a lot more gas um secondly island some guys did find some yellows on the northwest side uh unfortunately not great looking uh the front side got looked at for nothing uh, a couple days ago also. So, uh, again, this island has went from like the best island ever to the worst island ever <laughs> in like a matter of two years. So we'll see what changes with that. Uh, I was looking at the counts on 976 tuna, like the yellowtail counts for this year is a quarter of what last year was. So it's not just the island. The fish ain't making it there either. So it is what it is. Uh, out west, big fish zone. Seems to be bigger fish between the two banks and the deeper water. There's still some of the smaller fish up uh, on the bank. You know, this is, could be the 25 pound stuff, could be 80 pound stuff uh, proper up up on the bank on the higher spots. Uh, but the deeper water seems to be holding some big ones. I saw 280 today, so that's pretty rad. Um, that's the stuff that we're looking for in October, and that's what we're expecting. Um, we're just going to see if mother nature really allow you to get back out there one more time. But that is what I was hoping to be fishing for as, uh, we roll into El Nino this year. 
Um, I think, you know, this fishery has been tested when it comes to bluefin with the La Nina and then now a, a three-year La Nina, so to speak. And then now what brought them here was that 2015 El Nino. And now we're going to go into something pretty similar with uh, a, a fairly good size El Nino. We'll see what, what it actually plays out to be. But um, this could be the year that they go away. So if you get a chance to uh, to go fish for these big fish, take it. You never know when is the last year it's going to be. Um, we've seen exceptional fishing this year again and even this week up in San Francisco. So who's to say that those fish don't just start going there instead of coming here. So we'll see what happens. There's no way to know, but um, you know, I think if we see the fish make it all the way through next year's El Nino, then I think they're here to stay for a lot longer than people think. But the amount of volume of them for sure is absolutely incredible. Um, it almost feels like these fish have taken over the entire fishery by the counts. I know we had a pretty good Dorado year last year and a couple good ones uh, this year also. Um, but, but at some point, you're going to get tired of catching bluefin, I promise. I was actually pretty excited to, to catch a, a Dorado just to have uh, something different in the freezer. So, uh, But yeah, getting back to uh, the rest of the fishing here, uh, Cornon Islands got looked at. Not great. Um, there were some pictures floating around on social media of some uh, boats wrapping what people thought were tuna uh, off of Newport out here on the inside. It was not tuna. It's actually squid boats. Uh, that's how much squid there is at their daytime wrapping squid. So, again, a very healthy fishery here. And uh, all, the good th all the good signs you want to see if uh, you're doing daytime wraps on squid, uh, that's, that's a pretty serious amount of bait. So. Keep that in mind. Uh, below the border, still got scattered fish down here. Uh, you know, every day is a different day. You know, the San Diego fishes this area in particular quite often. Some days they got a, a bluefin, yellowfin mix. Sometimes they got a kelp patty, a load of Dorado. Every day is different, but pretty much just scattered fish in this zone. There's no out standout size of fish. Um, it's still that 20 to 30 pound roughly stuff. And Dorado, you never know, you're going to a four pounder or a 14 pounder. Uh, it's just kind of what's going on right now. But watch out for this wind. That's the biggest thing on the radar right now. And um, we'll see what happens and what this stuff looks like. So take a screenshot of this chart and uh, remember what it used to look like because I think things are going to look significantly different. So that's it for this week, guys. Be safe out there if you do decide to head out on the water. And uh, have yourself a nice weekend. Cheers. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out our website and online store at chasingprojects.com. And make sure you share the stoke.